out of everything that we've seen, we still have not seen Blackbeard's 10th Titanic captain yet. And we still don't have confirmation of the 10th Straw Hat yet. I wonder why. Hi, I'm Vagabond Kana, and in this video we're going to talk about the potential matchups that the Blackbeard Pirates will have up against the Straw Hat Pirates. So go ahead and hit that like button and you might as well subscribe while you're at it. Starting off, we're going to get the obvious matchups out the way. Now we all already know that Zoro will be fighting Shiryu. The Swordsman with Honor versus the Swordsman without Honor. Next up, we have the two snipers, Van Auger versus Usopp. One being a sniper of conventional means and the other being a sniper of unconventional means. Next up, we have Doc Q versus Chopper. Chopper being the one who wants to be able to cure any disease versus the man who can create any disease due to his devil fruit. These are all the obvious interactions that we will have, but what about the other characters? Let's start off with Lafitte. I'm going to give Lafitte to Brooke. Reasons for this is because Lafitte, back in Marine Fort Ark, was stated to be able to hypnotize the Marines in order to open the gates of justice for him. Who else has the ability to hypnotize? Brooke. Also, Lafitte is also known to be a stealth master. Who else is known to be stealthy? Brooke. Also, Lafitte seems to have a very sophisticated personality, always speaking in a polite and courteous manner. Who else does this? Brooke. And we're not sure if this is a weapon of Lafitte's or not, but he also walks around carrying a cane. Uh, look, look, he's facing off against Brooke, okay? I mean, like, come, come on. The next one we're going to cover is San Juan Wolf, mainly because he's the easiest one to cover. <laughs> at least opposed to the other crew members that I have to talk about. San Juan Wolf, his epithet is known as the Colossal Battleship. He is the biggest member of the Blackbeard Pirates and one of the biggest characters we've seen in One Piece. So obviously enough, I'm going to give this to Frankie. Well, if it wasn't obvious, I'll explain why. San Juan Wolf has a lot of ties to battleships. Like I said, his epithet is Colossal Battleship. His name is also inspired by a battleship. Frankie, being a big fan of battleships, there is a duality here, but it goes a little bit deeper than that. I actually do believe that in our current arc, in Egghead Island, something will happen to Frankie, giving him a power up or something that will allow Frankie to actually create a large General Frankie. Something large enough to rival the size of San Juan Wolf. I also think there's a foreshadowing reason why Oda had made Frankie's new bounty poster be that of the Sunny. Maybe something will happen to where he can turn like the Sunny into a giant Megazorg or something. Who knows? You never really know at this point in the series. <laughs> you really don't. Um, and honestly, I mean, it's One Piece. Just about anything can happen when it comes to scaling and power and whatnot. And Frankie's going to have to scale up to San Juan Wolf. It is what it is. Also, personality-wise, San Juan Wolf seems to be a little bit more on the shy and timid side, whereas Frankie is literally the exact opposite of that. I mean, Frankie will literally whip his dick out and then strike a pose. Uh, Frankie's not shy at all. <laughs> he don't care. Next up, we have Jesus Burgess, and this one's a little bit harder for me to figure out, but I've come to the conclusion that Burgess will more than likely face off against Jinbei. To start off, Burgess is a helmsman just like Jingbei is. Burgess also uses an attack called Shockwave Elbow, just like how Jinbei uses Shockwave-like attacks. It's also interesting because I like the idea of having different styles of fighting, such as Jesus Burgess having wrestling moves and Jinbei being more of the Fishman Karate style. Burgess also has a much more loud and brash personality, which is in contrast to Jinbei, who is actually a lot more quiet and calm and reserved, but very analytical. Next up, we have Vasco Shot, and we have absolutely nothing on this guy. I have no idea who this dude is going to fight. We know that his epithet is Heavy Drinker, and he drinks a lot, and that's kind of all we know. He's got a big nose. There's that. I would say, okay, Robin, just to, you know, just give Robin just somebody, but, you know, that's just kind of cheap. We have to find out a little bit more on Vasco Shot, but Vasco Shot is, I'd argue, one of the most mysterious ones out of the entire group, other than whoever the heck the 10th Titanic captain is. 
So Vasco's shot goes to Robin, I guess? Next up, we have Avalo Pizarro, another one that we don't know too much about. But what we do know is that he did used to be a king in the North Blue. Who else is from the North Blue? You, well, Sanji. Sanji's father is the ruler of Germa, so they might have some ties to Avalo Pizarro, quite possibly. His epithet is Corrupt King. But other than that, that's all I can get out of this. Now we get on to Nami. I think Nami will either fight Katarina Devon, or she will fight the 10th Titanic Captain in which we don't know who the heck that is yet. Now, who do I think is the 10th Titanic Captain and the 10th Straw Hat? Well, if you've been watching me for a while, you already know that I think that carrot is the 10th Straw Hat of the Straw Hat crew. But who do I think is the 10th Titanic Captain? I actually think that the 10th Titanic Captain will be a character that we have not seen yet. It will not be a character that we have already been introduced to. It will be a brand new character. Now, I like the idea that Carrot will face off against Katarina Devon, mainly due to the fact that Katarina Devon's epithet is Crescent Moon Hunter. That's oddly specific. Like, honestly, it's oddly specific, and I wonder why that's the case anyways, considering that her epithet is named Crescent Moon Hunter, and Carrot represents the moon, makes a lot of sense to me. Not only that, but you have Katarina Devon being a nine-tailed fox, and Carrot being a bunny rabbit. More so, she represents the moon bunny. Foxes hunt rabbits, crescent moon hunter, kinda just, it kinda clicks. I just like it. On top of that, the Naruto reference of Kaguya versus Naruto, Kaguya the moon bunny versus Naruto the nine-tailed fox. I just like that, even though I'm pretty sure that's not what Oda's trying to do, but I just like the idea of it. It is quite possible, however, that Carrot will end up facing off against whatever the 10th Titanic Captain is. But I did come up with another character for Carrot to face off against. And this, this one is a shot in the dark, but it's not as crazy as it may sound. I also really like the idea of Carrot facing off against Avalo Pizarro. Now hear me out. Avalo Pizarro is known as the Corrupt King. Carrot was just made the ruler of Zo, making them both rulers of a kind. Avalo Pizarro also has glove gauntlets, which the only other character I can think of that has that is also Carrot. So I like to think of it as more like the corrupt ruler with gauntlets facing off against the more pure and inexperienced ruler with gauntlets. It's just an idea that I like, but uh, this may not happen. I do like the Katarina Devon idea a little bit more, but you never truly know. But if Carrot does end up actually facing off against Avalo Pizarro, then I'll actually move Sanji to Vasco's shot, Heavy Drinker versus Heavy Smoker, Nami versus Katarina Devon, and Robin versus the mysterious 10th Titanic Captain. But that's what I have to say in terms of matchups. I do think that the 10th Titanic Captain and the 10th Straw Hat will be revealed around the same time because I can't really think of any other reason why Oda would take his sweet time on revealing the 10th Titanic Captain. Why not just bring him to us already, you know? But hey, who knows? We'll see soon enough. But if you enjoyed this video, please by all means like and subscribe. Come and join the Vagabond journey. We're off to our next destination. With that being said, Vagabond gone.